sure that. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? Let me just adjust the. There we go, we're just about to go around the corner where I'm going to get blasted by the sun. Let's do it really slowly because it's really tight and there may be things coming the other way. There are better ways to drive to work. I mean, there's another way, isn't there? There's just. Oh, there we are. There's another way to. Oh, there's some frost on the fields as well. It's been very bright. It must have been quite cold last night then. I can go on the old motorway, but uh, not motorway, you know, but there's a faster way, but it's just not so much fun. This, I like driving down these windy bends. And uh, it puts about three minutes on the journey, believe it or not, although it's probably shorter. But uh, you know, you just gotta just gotta do what feels right, don't you? What feels like, you know, what brightens up your day, not racing a brand's hatch with a load of idiot sales reps. Yeah, so still no sign of any growth on the trees yet. We're still in February. Still time to plant trees. Still time to prune trees. Trees are a big thing around here. You probably gathered. Everyone's got a ton of trees growing something. We we'll grow apples, grow uh, underneath the trees, you grow uh, asparagus, you grow uh, blackberries, pears, plums, um, rhubarb. All grows naturally. Well, I say naturally, I mean with absolutely no intervention whatsoever. So, what's happened? Yeah, so yesterday we did uh, covered fee setting, didn't we? So if anyone's got any thoughts on that, then by all means, do say so. Today, I was, uh, I mean, again, it's only like a sort of thought for the day, really. That's a weird thing, that thought for the day, isn't it? Do you know how that started, thought for the day? It was uh, uh, came from a time when the country was very much more religious than it is at the moment. At the moment, the religious uh, believers are in the minority in the UK. But when they were in the majority, they used to have a thing on the... They, there was a demand on the radio for a thing called the Radio Padre. And Padre is like a Roman Catholic term, so you, that tells you how far back it goes. And uh, they had the Radio Padre and then uh, the the uh, push back against uh, giving religion a, a sort of an entrenched uh, pulpit, I suppose, for want of a better word, that's probably quite a good word. Giving religion a pulpit, a daily pulpit or a weekly pulpit on the on the on the only on the home service, which then became Radio Four, was such that they sort of shrunk it down. In so it still intrudes. I don't know, they might have cancelled it, I don't listen to Radio 4. Last time I listened to Radio 4, they used to have a thought for the day. And then um, they, people said, well, why should it be exclusively a Christian thought for the day? You know, we're disenfranchising, disenfranchising Sikhs, we're disenfranchising uh, Muslims and uh, Jews. And so they uh, introduced this short, uh, avuncular, gay, Jewish uh, thought for the day, Rabbi Lionel Blue, who was uh, had the gift of the gab, I've got to tell you, he's very funny, and always finished with a joke, and it was always like a good joke, and uh, wrote lots of books, and his philosophy, his philosophy was, was I wouldn't say it was like uh, exclusively Jewish philosophy, but I mean he had quite quite a good outlook on life. That was at least he was interesting, you know, and didn't sermonise like all the others. But um, so they sort of expanded the religious side of it, and, and then, but never ever had a atheist. They wouldn't. They may do one day. <laughs> they may. Now that the country is more than fifty percent atheist, or at least. Not you know not not theist. Uh, I mean atheism is a, is a particular way of thinking that where which professes that gods don't exist. Um, and in fact, most people who don't believe in God are not atheists. Believe it or not, they're just 
they're just waiting for proof <laughs> to turn up. Proof of this amazing claim, which would have to be amazing proof, wouldn't it? I mean, you have to admit that you know anyone who makes a claim that God exists, that's an extraordinary claim and, and really requires more than the average proof for something like that. Uh, rather, you know, you can't just say, well, I think it, therefore it is. Um, so, anyway, they're still, uh, they've still got uh, uh, voting rights in the House of Lords, all the bishops and everything, so we're still not entirely freed ourselves of the influence of the Dark Ages. But anyway, where was I? This is the trouble. This is the trouble. You need to have some sort of mental hook, don't you? How did I get from fee setting to the number of bishops in the House of Lords? Anyway. I don't have um, any patients booked in today, so I'm just going in to do an emergency session. Someone's rung up and uh, said their fillings fallen out, so we've told them to come in at 10 o'clock. And we've got a few other, and the thing about 10 o'clock is that it means that uh, other people can ring, can't they? They can, if they've got a problem, they'll ring us at 9 o'clock or 8, 8.45, 9 o'clock, and then we'll be able to say, yeah, just come in at 10.30 or something. And then by, by about 11 o'clock, you've done, you've dealt with all the work and uh, you can finish, you know. You can go home knowing that if anybody rings you at 2 o'clock, you can say, I'm sorry, we're not open till Monday morning. But what a shame you didn't, you know, if it had been an emergency and you'd rung at 9, we could have seen you in the emergency session at 10. Which they're not going to be happy with, are they? No, I'm not. I rang up the hospital once, my wife fell over and needed a stitch. And uh, we rang up we rang up the local our local hospital. Bearing in mind that they were our local hospital because she was under treatment there for something else. And they told her about this something else if she ever had any trouble just to come straight in. And so we were like, well, perhaps we can come straight in and get a stitch. I mean, you know, needing a stitch is actually slightly more uh, of an emergency than than the, any any other thing she might have gone in about. Anyway, uh, that's better. Anyway, they're like, oh, what a shame, you know, we had an emergency session. You could have come in this morning, we could have put a stitch in then. We're like, oh, right, okay, then that's fine, you know, I'll just turn the clock back four hours. And, because that, <laughs> stitching needs to be done straight away, doesn't it? I can't say, I mean if your crown if your filling's fallen out or your crown's fallen out or something, then that can wait. But if you if you fall over and need a stitch, then you need it there and then. Oh, anyway. I think um, I mean if you don't have any patients booked in and this is I mean, I'm talking to the private practitioners here because really as an NHS practitioner, you're not going to have no patients booked in, okay? So if you're an NHS dentist, then what I'm going to say is not really going to make much sense to you. But uh, I think it's still a good idea to come to work at a normal time and go home at a normal time. Perhaps go home early if there's nothing to do and it obviously it seems pointless that there's no point hanging about, but um, I would certainly sort of start work at normal time, or if not 8 45, then 9 o'clock, or tell everyone just to come in at 9 o'clock or something, you know, give them a 15 minute line or something. And the reason for that is it's, it's bad for morale if um, you've got no patients booked in and you just tell everybody to take the day off. It's like, it's tantamount to giving up, isn't it? It's like, and it's not like there's nothing to do. I mean, what do you do when there are no patients booked in? The answer is that you work on getting more patients booked in, you know? All those things that you can't do to stimulate demand when you're busy with demand, you can do when you're not busy. So, what are the, some of the things you can do? Well, there are two sources of increased demand, right? Well, there, there, are, there are more than two, but let's say that uh, 
basically they fall into two groups. One is um, stirring the pot, what I call stirring the pot, which is basically looking at all the patients you've got on your books and work out who could come in. So that includes people whose work is sitting around who you know, could be rung up and told that they could come in today instead of next week or something. Uh, but mainly people who you know, are more than a, a few months overdue with their checkup, or uh, people who are, you know, uh, seriously overdue with their checkups, people who've been quoted for work and that have decided not to have it done. You know, I suppose you say to someone like you need a crown, and they say, well, I, I don't want to have it done at the moment, which basically is sort of code for no, I can't afford it. And it may be that some of them can afford it now. And so what you do is you you write to them and say, look, you know, um, we noticed that you've got treatment outstanding and now would be a good time to get it done, you know. We've got appointments at short notice. Or um, as far as getting discount, I mean, you know, I mean, it's... I'm not a firm... I don't think giving discounts brings in a ton of work. I think discounts and dentistry don't really work well together. You know, someone who's not having a crown done because it's 540 quid, he's not going to come in and get it done just because you give him a 10% discount. These things are not uh, spontaneous purchases, you know, they're not, they're not snap purchases, they're considered purchases, they're planned purchases and uh, uh, you know, so if I want to buy a Bentley Malzan and they ring me, contact me and say they'll give me 10% off, we've got 10% off Bentley Malzans, then it's not going to convince me to buy one unless I am on the verge, I'm on the verge of buying one. If I plan to buy one, if I was going to buy one anyway, you know, it might force me to, get, to, to do it today rather than in next month or the month after. Which I suppose is the, you know, it does bring the purchasing forwards, doesn't it? But you pay a heavy price. I mean, 10% of the of your income is a heavy price just to shift the sum of it forwards a, a week or two. So, in general, I don't recommend it. The other all-inclusive pricing, I think, might be uh, might not be a bad idea. I think. Uh, Certainly, when you go abroad, and you see uh, lots of dentists. You know they're quite aggressive in their marketing, and they hand out leaflets saying uh, implant plus abutment plus crown, 700 euros, all in, all in, todo inclusivo. You know, and uh, I can see why that would be like a fixed price, all in fixed price for something. I can see that that might be uh, attractive. Certainly. It reduces the uh, fear of fear of fear of cost, doesn't it? Because that's again, I mean, not that our patients have much fear of cost, because of our fully costed treatment plans, they always know exactly what we're suggesting, how much it's going to cost. But that idea that you could perhaps group some treatments together, you know, you could say exam exam scale and polish, uh, special price. Uh, 59 pounds then that might be that might be a good idea you know but would you make it new patients only or what how do you do it so Um, then, uh, then there are the other ways of, uh, you know, getting new patients, stimulating demand, and they are um, marketing. We well, come under the heading of marketing, and that includes advertising. Advertising is the first thing that everybody thinks. And now I've got to tell you, in my 30-something years of being in practice, I have tried every single type of advertising. There's a there's a book called Guerrilla Marketing. G U E guerrilla marketing uh, and it's written by this guy who's 
you're a specialist at uh, getting your firm's name out in front of everybody and they, he goes through absolutely every type of marketing there is you know from from buying up middle of the night television slots for a few hundred dollars to uh, leaving flyers in public toilets he's, he's got every single way to market your practice and uh, I've tried them all <laughs> been arrested in a lot of public toilets um, and I've got to tell you the only two that work are Google and to a lesser much lesser extent Yahoo and Facebook and uh, word of mouth they will bring in almost all of your patients so You'd be far better off, you know, uh, getting some business cards printed, making sure you give them away to everybody on their last visit, and uh, optimizing your Google uh, your website the, rather than than uh, taking a stand at the local uh, shopping centre, you know, to get hiring one of their canvas sort of uh, stalls or doing a leaflet drop door to door or all of the other wacky ideas that the staff always come up with and that we've tried that never ever 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 pay back what you're going to put into them you know we, we hired a stall I think for five days in the week at the local shopping centre and you've got you know it looks odd for a start if the um if the dentist is there, people think, what the hell's a dentist doing in a stall at a shopping centre? And then, and then you've got the staff are there anyway, aren't they? You have to have two or three staff there. So you've got their wages to cover. And then you've got uh, expenses associated with branding the stand, getting pop-ups made. And then what are you going to give away, you know? What, getting leaflets made up? thinking about special offers, etc, etc. So, anyway, that's my thoughts for today. Sorry they're not worth much. I'll, uh, well, they might be worth something, I don't know. <laughs> might be just what you need to hear. Alright, bye then, bye.